Why'd you have to hire her, Cliff? It shoves her right in the middle of a feud she never even heard of. You on the one side, Jerry Winslow on the other. Her boss against her husband. She can't win, no matter how she plays it. Happy birthday, darling. Well, I, um, uh, I guess some days a girl just doesn't have it. Don't give me that. I'll just call him. What? Oh, little Miss Innocence, you don't know what I'm talking about. Jerry, when you act this way, I'm not sure I even want to know. Whatever it is, I'm sorry. 
I'm sure you are. Black lace, huh? How much extra did that get you? Jerry, it I... It all comes back to you now, doesn't it? Listen, you call him. Jerry, be reasonable. We talked about my going to work. Yeah, we talked about what I think a cliff came to. It's only a job, a temporary job. Temporary, like a marriage? What can I say to him? Oh, Jerry, I just can't. Yes, you can. The bills, the, the bank, there's an overdraft. I had to borrow from Ruth to cover it. You know, it's great the way you blab all our business to her. What am I supposed to do? The bills aren't going to take care of themselves. A man makes 20000 a year. That ought to be enough Jerry, to take care of Jerry, that was just one year. You want to throw that in my face? No, I don't mean to, but I... Look, is that what it's going to take? Throwing it at you? Two years ago, $20,000. Last year, six. This year, who knows? Damn it, I said call him. This is Cliff Kane. Oh, yes, Miss Winslow. Oh, no. No, I understand. If you can't, you can't. But uh, if anything changes, you let me know, huh? I'm sorry, too. Anyhow, thanks for calling. Good freak. Joe, I wonder how far Winslow will try to push his wife. I think I better look this boy up and have a little talk with him. It stopped. That's nice. I like the record. Only this birthday is sort of special. I'm treating myself to a divorce. You heard me. 
Jerry, I, I called him. I quit the job. But you took it, didn't you, before you quit? A man makes $20,000 a year. There's only one reason his wife goes to work for Cliff Kane. Jerry, that's not true. I love you. I love you. You don't even know what the word means. I do. I Look do. out, you worthless little. Keep your hands off me. Jerry. You heard me. Who needs you? A cheap tramp like you. Stop. Some two-bit big shot comes along and gives you a line of bull about a fancy job and you flip. Jerry, stop. No matter how worthless he is, just so it makes you feel a little less like dirt. Jerry, stop it! Where do you think you're going? I'm not even warmed up yet. Let me go! Let me go! Cool off, dear. Jerry. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Oh, the tramp like you who needs a reason. Pay on you! The kicking's just about your speed. Me, anytime I have to knock anybody around, you'll know you finally dragged me down to your level. <laughs> talking about. Look, you've got this interlude deal in your pocket right now if you play your cards right. Poke Jerry Winslow in the nose. That's the end of it. You shouldn't have kicked her out, Joe. How do you know what happened? You don't. Yesterday they split. Today you can't wait to take a poke at him. Over a woman you hardly know to say hello to. Doesn't matter what I know. He shouldn't have done it. I thought that's what you wanted. Nice messy breakup. Oh, come on, Joe. You know it wasn't. You could have fooled me. All right, all right, then. That's what I wanted. You know, Cliff, there's just one thing wrong with you when it comes to this kind of deal. You don't like to see little people get hurt. Bad handicap. I'll take my chances. I'll just bet you will. You act like you were about 10 years old. Oh, Kane, long time no see. You know why I came over here. What's this business with your wife? You know, you must be boss. You lose a new girl before you even sign her on. Why did I lose her? Who knows? She won't hold on your deal, that's all. You sure you didn't twist her arm? Well, then why should I bother? You know, Kane, you're about as transparent as this bourbon. You hired Ellen just to needle me. Well, if you want her, you take her, because I'm through with her. You two-bit cotton picker. Go ahead. Casework Council, Miss Rogers speaking. This is Ellen. Ellen, where have you been? There's a call here for you from Jerry's office. Mr. Nedlin wants to see you right away. Well, I'll go by. Ruth, you were right. I can't just live on hope and wait for Jerry to do something. Not with all those bills on my mind. I've got to have some money. All I can do is take the job and hope that someday that he'll understand. But. I do feel guilty. I just feel so guilty. Oh, hello, Mrs. Winslow. Mr. Nedwin, Mrs. Winslow's here. Send her in. message that you wanted to see me, Mr. Nedwood. Yes, sit down. Nothing's the matter, is there? Have you seen this? 
No, I don't think I have. No need to read it. It just says Jerry's taking four weeks off without notice. You mean you don't know about it? No, I didn't. Ellen, ordinarily I'd fire a man on the spot for a trick like this. But for your sake, I'm reserving judgment. You two have been having trouble, haven't you? Yes. Straighten it out. Look, Mr. Nedwin, I can't. I, I, I just don't know where Jerry is. That's your problem. He better be back here Monday morning if he wants to go on with Omex. Max, let me prowl Jerry's desk. This was in his phone book. First name, address. Well, it might just be worth a try. Well, let's hope so. No, you don't. Not until you tell me about this Cliff Kane business. Is he married? His wife died three years ago. He's trying to line up a contract to do some drilling for Pemex in Mexico. Where did you come in? The pay's fabulous and I work around the clock. By the way, he's going to come by tonight, and he's got some papers, and he wants me to study. So you promptly go off hunting for Jerry. <coughs> Ruth, what choice do I have? If I don't find Jerry, he's going to lose his job. Right back, 
you wait just a sec, dog. <laughs> Drink a vodka? <laughs> like with the AA? -A? Gotcha. <laughs> What's the matter? I got two heads or something? No, I, I just didn't. You! Leave the lady alone. Listen, dog eater. Dog eater? How do you like that, big man? You call it cheap dog eater. You eat. Nobody bug you with chiefs around. Stick around, baby. You're strong, aren't you? Strong? Sure strong. Chief half Pawnee, half Wolof. Strong races. Please let go. Please stop. What's the matter, baby? Too much light in here, huh? Hey, Chief, what you talking about? Somebody get the big one. Chief, are, are you all right? Thank me, thank your friend Ruth. She was so scared I had no choice but to come. I'm sorry. Well, you ought to be going into a rat trap like that. It's a foolish thing to do. You going home now? I guess. I don't know. I don't know that I can take Ruth. Not right now. I... Take it easy. Maybe I can help you. I'm going to get my car and you follow me. All right here, the people that run this place are friends of mine. Here's your key. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, if you come to work five minutes early... Secretary. Well, maybe I better. Must be some woman around don't beg for a beating. Yeah. I'm sure there are. Good night, Mr. Kane. It's got to be your fault. Always. You know, it seems to me you care a lot more about him than he does about you. You're punishing yourself, Ellen. You're sicker than he is, even. 
cheap little tramp. Suppose they're right. Suppose they're right. I never take any chances. What do you want with Harvey? Well, I'm trying to locate Jerry. He was called on business down this way, only something's come up, and I want to get in touch with him right away. I thought maybe your husband might have heard from him. Well, maybe. Well, you haven't seen him, have you? Oh, not since he left here. He's a good boy, though. Good to his ma. I knew her real well. Well, look, maybe your husband... Look, where can I find him, Mrs. Suggett? He's out working stock. Won't be in till late. I see. You, uh, you have a ranch? Seven miles out the old river road. Yes, he's there. Well, if you do hear from Jerry, here's my address. Never know about that Harvey. Always some woman. He won't believe me, but one of these days I'm going to catch him and I'm going to kill him him and whoever's with him. You bear that mind, young woman. I won't take it forever. Someday it'll be just once too often.
Howdy. Are you Mr. Suggett? Friends call me Harvey. Friends like Jerry Winslow? Just might be. Might make you out his wife, too. Yes, that's right. Well, now, I like that fine. You and me needs to get acquainted. Look, I need your help, Mr. Suggett. Harvey. Oh, Harvey. You see, Jerry's disappeared. Trouble between you? I thought maybe you might, might have seen him. You don't know where he is, do you? Been years, miss. Uh, what did you say your name was? <laughs> Ellen. Mighty pretty name, Ellen. Favorite of mine. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, about Jerry. I sure wish I could help. You know how it is, though. Jerry's long gone ever since back when his ma died. Uh, uh, look, Mr. Suggett, I mean Harvey, you might as well know. You see, Jerry never told me about you or, or anyone here. He never even told me that, that he came from Quarter. Figures. Jerry always was a stranger. Why? I mean, we've been married for three years. Why would he keep where he came from a secret? It really stops you, don't it? Yes, it does. Well, maybe I could help a little. Oh, could you? Let's see, two o'clock now. Tell you what, I got a lot of work to do around here. Meet you out the graveyard about six. That suits you? The graveyard? Mm-hmm. Couldn't you just tell me here, right now? Kay. Why? Ain't the kind of thing you can tell. You gotta see it. I don't understand. You will. Six o'clock. All right. Six o'clock. Graveyard these parts got a Comanche dance ground next door. Ain't you never been to a stomp dance? You don't know what you missed. Come on, over here is what we come to see. Look, Mr. Suggett, all this talk, what did you bring me out here for? Well, now, why would a man bring a good looking woman like you out here? I mean, after all, honey. Oh, I see. <laughs> Look, I can see what your wife meant. Zelda? Yeah. One of these days, that old gal just plain out gonna get me. Shoot me dead for sure. Especially after I tell her about this. Wait a minute. I'm just an old kidder. Oh, my sense of humor is just out of order. Don't you want to see what you came for? Right here. His mother. And my name. Jerry feels things. I mean really feels them. Here, look. First day every month there's still fresh flowers put here. Stand in order. Old lady was a hellion. Worse than that toward the end. Way she rode, Jerry, I thought sure he'd kill her sometime. He didn't kill her? No. Just coddled her more. But then when she died... He left. Never came back. First day every month, fresh flowers. That's all anybody ever hears. Guess he just hurts too much ever want to see the place again. Or ever talk about it. Even to me. If I'd only known this. Nobody knows, Jerry. We used to talk. Only all he'd say was words. Never knew what was really going on inside his head. Not unless he wanted you to. Time we was getting back toward town. Wouldn't want Zell to come hunting me, would you? Hey, how about that stomp dance tonight? I could use a drinking, buddy. Look, don't you understand English, Mr. Suggett? No. Don't fret about it. Woman never ought to bounce a man too hard anyhow. He might get her next time. Harvey, Ellen. This old Harvey got that bottle. Doug, 
get Harvey. Look, Mr. Tucker, I'm not going to drink with you now or ever. Is that clear? Don't leave much room for doubt. Well, then you won't have to bother me anymore, will you? Sure, Snoop, Pry, start rumors, smear me and my mother. That's all you did. Why? Why did you do it? Jerry, I wasn't snooping. Mr. Nevin told Dirt, me. Dirt, that's what you were looking for. Just something to smear me. You told me you were going to lose your job if I didn't find you. Oh. oh, Jerry, please. Let's stop all this. I don't want a divorce. So to prove it, you sneak on down here to my hometown, go out to the cemetery for graveside services with Harvey Suggett. Jerry, you don't believe that. Believe it, I know it. You little tramp, I'm not going to let you get Jerry. away with this. You're leaving town right now. First it was Kate and now Harvey. Comanches know how to deal with your kind. Did you ever see a woman with her nose cut off? <laughs> Today, coming to be Jerry Winslow's wife. Well, what do you mean? Breaking into old Walt's place. Oh, well, I was scared and I, I thought. That ain't no answer. Woman, you better come and go with me. Howdy, Tom. See, you got my little gal. Good deal. Here, have a drink. Uh oh, not now. Wait a minute after you're off. All right, gal, let's go. Wait a minute. This woman's my prisoner. Just for being a little high? Come on now, Tom. You and the JP can't be that hard up for feed. Who said anything about being high? She broke into Walt's place. Well, ain't that proof enough? Who'd want to break into that rat's nest sober? Let's go, Ellen. Damn it, I said wait. You're a stubborn old fool, Tom. Here, here's five. 
Have Alec come over in the morning and fix the latch, okay? Well, okay. Ellen? The way I see it, some women just shouldn't ought to drink. But boy, ain't you glad some of them do? Jail just full of rats and cockroaches. Nobody's gonna send me to jail, and you know it. Why don't you tell Tom that back there you really believe it? You're stuck. No car, no purse. One wrong word out of you, you end up in jail. One wrong word like the one you sent Jerry? Jerry's an old friend. A man can't let his friends down, can he? Stop it! Hell, get in there. I ain't gonna hurt you. I just want company. Have you back here in time for the 1040 bus to Oklahoma City? Buy your ticket in the cell. No! You yell, I'll bust you. Then you city folks gotta learn talks cheap, but it takes money to buy with. Get in there. You and me's going to a stall thing. hurt you like this. Oh, Ellen, when you called me last night to come down to that awful little town, well, you were shook, girl. Oh, how inadequate can words be? Sure you don't want to tell me about it? Speak to Mr. Cliff Kane, please. Yes, that's right. Mr. Kane, this is Ellen Winslow. 
Things have changed for me, and I can come to work any time you say. Yesterday after lunch? Yes, that'll be just fine. Thank you. Ellen Winslow, have you gone stark staring mad? You're in no shape to go to work today. I'm in worse shape to stay here. If I'm alone, if I start to think... Ruth, I've got to work. I've got to work so hard and I'm just so tired I can't remember. <laughs> Was it Gerald? No. Well, but you did talk to him. You did see him. Oh, yes, I saw him. He comes from there. From Quad, huh? That's right. But I thought he said he came I know. from... He lied. I don't even think he ever lived in Pennsylvania. A lie like that? You know, Ellen, I'm beginning to get the picture now. And it makes some things so much clearer. Don't go overboard. What are you getting at? Well, this is the first time Jerry's ever made sense to me. You know, that town's his sore spot. Something happened to him down there. <laughs> really? I thought it was just my guilt feelings. Go ahead, stick in the needle. I'm not sticking in the needle. It's just that I, I'm trying to start a whole new pattern without Jerry. Look, I, I'm sorry, Ruth, but I... I really have to get that in the work. I'm sorry, too. Because if you would listen a minute, you might learn a few things. Like why kooky old maid social workers don't marry. Ruth, you don't have to. You was wonderful. <laughs> Porter, Daily Oklahoma. Only we had a fight. I don't even remember what it was about now. Anyway, I was... I was too proud to make the first move. Say, I was sorry. First thing I knew, we'd gone off to the El Paso Times. Once I almost flew down to see him, try to work things out. A single woman doesn't chase a man cross country, does she? Nope. That's the end of it. I'm sorry. Oh, Ellen, don't let that happen to you. I wouldn't ever tell you to go back to Jerry, but don't be so proud you end up living alone like me. Ruth, look, you don't understand. It's not my pride. It's just that I, I, I don't want to have to think. I want to keep busy. I don't want to think about anything that happened in Quata, that's all. That's why I have to get ready, and that's why I have to go to work. <laughs> Too soon. We still have that little old meeting up at Eureka Springs. You never know. You never know what's going to happen at a contract meeting. Contracts typed up the first thing in the morning. We should be on location by the 15th. All right, gentlemen, that does it. Thank you. Now, if you'll join me in the other room, we have some refreshments for you.
Nice going, Helen. Thanks, Joe. My pleasure. Got a proposition for you. Cliff's headed south, two full years out of the States. You'll need a new job. Joe? How's about working for Hinterloo? No. Mm -mm, I haven't thought about anything past today, and I'm not going to. That's a good story. You calling me a liar? Uh-huh. Don't blame you a bit, though. Man's always bigger game than a job for a woman. Joe, honestly. Look, I'm not so young anymore, but I'm not blind yet. You're good for Cliff. He shines like a polished rod when he's around you. He's a good man. Fired a boiler for me on my first rig down at Joiner, Texas, back when he was just a scrawny kid. He doesn't talk about those days very much. Man's got a right to his privacy. That I wholly believe. One thing I'll say, though, anything Cliff's got, he got the hard way, straight. No cards off the bottom. Well, that sounds just like what some little girl in Mexico might be looking for, Joe. You've got first dibs. Of course, you know how it is. Easy to get carried away. Aren't you trying to tell me that little Ellen better keep her head on straight, right? Okay, Joe. I'll try. Well, Joe, we made it. Glad for you, Cliff. Congratulations. Well, you're the one that cinched it. How do you thank somebody? Save it, save it. For some day, I don't have a date with the bartender downstairs. Maybe we'll join you later. Huh? See you. You all worn out? Well, it won't catch up with me till tomorrow. And then I'm just gonna die. <laughs> Uh, maybe I better do something about you right now. Come here. Nice. Nice. Game for a trip downtown? It's only a thousand feet. Are you kidding? Give me two minutes to change my shoes. You're on. I'll give you a minute and a half. in that river when I was a kid. Worth the climb? Oh, Cliff, it's just wonderful. What's the matter? Nothing. I'm sorry. I guess I just jumped to a conclusion. It's not you. It's me. Cliff, a woman... I mean... Look, I didn't come to Eureka just to work. Look, don't, don't laugh at me. Please don't laugh at me. I wanted you to kiss me. But I just don't feel that I've got the right. Right? It doesn't make any difference to you. It doesn't matter to you. Wait a minute. Here we 
time I think about that ring, I remember you're married. You're not the kind of a girl that can brush something like this off. You're going to feel smeared every time you look at me or any other man. I'm sorry. Please, look, look. I was married when you hired me. What difference does it make now? Maybe I didn't know until now how much I loved you. You love me. Can you think of any other reason I'd stop? That rough? Oh, warm into an oven. I'm going to tell you, these last two weeks since Cliff and I got back from Eureka Springs, I never knew you could cram in so much work. Go on this way, you're going to fade away to a free spot. Well, somebody's going to make things move. Oh, who am I kidding? I want to spend as much time with Cliff as I can until he leaves tomorrow night. You're laying yourself open for some mighty lonely nights. Maybe not. A passport? Mm-hmm. Unlike Jerry, my birthday's coming up. A divorce may not be as much of a present as you think. Well, I'm going to take my chances. A man get pretty lonesome working out a two-year deal south of Mexico. Ellen, don't count too much on Cliff. What's the matter? I thought you liked him. Liking has nothing to do with it. But why hasn't he asked you to marry him? Because I'm married already, remember? You're getting a divorce, aren't you? Ruth, are you trying to say that Cliff doesn't really want to marry me? Worse than that. I mean, worse. Why was he so eager to hire you? Why wouldn't he be? He needed help. It was more than that. Jerry saw oh. it, even. Jerry. He blew up. Of course he blew up. We've had trouble before. Ellen, I ask around. Cliff and Jerry worked together years ago. They worked together? Mm -hmm. They had trouble. Cliff hired you just to get back at Jerry. What? Oh, I'm sorry, but it's true. Joe Vincent let it slip to a friend of mine. And I thought you ought to know before things went any further. I'm sorry, Ellen. I wish it wasn't this way. I don't want sympathy. I want the truth. Did Cliff and Jerry ever have trouble? Well, I don't know that you quite call it that. So did they or didn't they? They both wanted the same job once. Only Jerry got i afraid so. I meant what I said about Cliff. Anything he's come by, he earned the hard way. It cost him years losing out to Jerry. You also said that he played straight. I still do. And that Jerry didn't? You know how it is in business. Yeah. Yeah, I see. Cliff and Jerry. My boss and my husband. They hate each other, but nobody sees me! Of course, a man has a right to his privacy. Now, you wholly believe that, don't you? Helen, girl, I don't blame you. Well, I blame you. I know how you must feel. Oh, stay away from me, Joe Vincent. As far as I'm concerned, you and Cliff Kane are two of a kind. Ellen! What's the matter? I've been drinking. I've been drinking all afternoon. I'm drunk. For the first time in my life, I'm drunk. And it's because I'm a no-good little tramp, like Jerry said. Oh, you flipped, you mean. Come on, let's get some black coffee. That isn't going to do me any good, Ruth. Not when you've done what I've done. What have you done? I betrayed Jerry, and that's what I did. You know, girl, sometimes I wonder about you. Have you forgotten all the bad things he's done to you? He's the one hot for a divorce, remember? I deserve that. Oh, now, that's a switch. I do. I took that job with Cliff. I went snooping around Quad. Well, you wouldn't have me told the truth in the first place. Oh, Ruth, you don't understand. After all, a man's got his pride. Pride, schmide. He lights his teeth. Poor Jerry. He loved his mother so much. Wonder about 
that. About what? This is mother love fixation. Don't you get it, Ellen? The old lady was a hellion. That's what the ones who knew her told you. Ruth, he loved her. He didn't love her. He hated her. She just had him buffalo. That's all. Couldn't face up to how he really felt, not even to himself. Likely hates all women. You especially. Oh, you. You're back to psychology, aren't you? You know what you are, Ruth? You're a snoopy old maid. You know? You just... Dig and dig deep until it hurts. It's because I guess nobody ever loved you, and so you say so you're jealous that somebody loved me. All right, have it your way. But what comes next? What do you figure to do about it? I just want to find him. I just want to tell him that I'm sorry, and I just want to ask you if you just please forgive me. These guilt feelings. Punishing yourself again over the things your father thought was wrong with you. I feel like I feel. All right, call Jerry. Be a fool. What do you think I've been doing, Ruth? Can't you find him? No, I can't. What's Cliff say? What about Cliff? Might be surprised what Cliff might know. Oh, well, he's gone. They're all gone. They're missing. All oh, my men are missing. Oh, I hope that's Cliff. I just hope that's Cliff. Really hope that's Cliff. This is my last night here. How about you girls having a couple of free steaks with me? That's right, isn't it? A dinner's supposed to do it, isn't it? What is this, riddle night? A dinner's supposed to do what? That's right, you don't know, do you? No. All right. I'll give you a riddle. What kind of scum is it that hires a woman just to make her husband look cheap? Well, what are you talking about? What the hell is that supposed to mean? You know what it means. You hired me to get back at Jerry. To get back at Jerry? I don't think he's worth the bother. Now, why did you hire me, Cliff? Because you needed a job. Mm -hmm. Okay. But you never told me about Jerry, did you? All those fights you had, you never told me. And all these years, you've hated him, but you never let me know about it, did you? Oh, Ellen, you're not reading it right. I'm sorry, I know I should have told you, but once the whole thing got started, I, I just simply didn't know how. It was, you know, awkward. Oh, yeah, I can see that. I mean, uh, after all, the truth is always pretty awkward, isn't it? It wasn't that way, believe me. It's always that way when a man is trying to steal another man's wife. If I thought for a minute you meant that. I want to tell you something. I never meant anything more in my life, Cliff Kane. I think you're a wife stealer. Really? Well, I wouldn't call it stealing. Not when the wife acted the way you did up at the Narrows. What? You heard me. You want your husband back? You really want him back? Boys say he's down at Packingtown, at the Al Nora Motel, Unit 14. I'll get it. Yes? Jerry. Oh, it's my ever-loving wife. I've got to see you. I've got to. Sure, honey, sure, but uh, maybe I don't got to see you, you know? Well, yeah, you could come out. Well, just any time. Of course, it might be a little embarrassing, you know, in case I had some little blonde in here for company. But you could come. Listen, you can't you get it through your thick skull that I don't want to see you now or ever? Just steer clear of me. Go down to Mexico and get yourself a divorce if you want, but don't mess around me anymore. What's up? Ellen. Ellen? She's coming out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if I know her, she's coming out. Look, Harvey, brush her off for me, will you? I just don't want to see her. Yeah, but... Well, uh, hit her on the head, stomp on her, anything, just so you run her off. Unless you'd rather come with me. 
Zelda prowling around down there at the Antlers Hotel just waiting for me to show my face? You're kidding. Were you scared of her? Did you ever see Zelda shoot? No. I taught her myself. You just go ahead. I'll stick right here. message through to Cliff Kane fast. Can do? Okay, here's the message. Ellen Winslow wants him to meet her right away. Unit 14, El Noro Motel out on South Agnew. You got it? And hurry it up. And tell Kane to hurry too because it's urgent. Suggett's room, please. Hello, Mrs. Suggett. You don't know me, but I know where your husband is. He's with a woman right now. Unit 14, El Noro Motel, out on South Agnew. If you hurry up, you can catch him. That's Unit 14, El Noro Motel. Do you mean about you breaking into Walt's place? You know what I mean. You really think they'll listen to you? Rape is a word that gets attention. Ain't no such thing as rape. Ask any cop. You dragged me out there. Come here of your own free will just That's now. That's not true, and you know it. I came here to see Jerry. And the room's in my name. You so much as look cross-eyed at me, I'll smear you. <laughs> smear you good. More mud than you find worth the rest of it. <laughs> to get Ellen's signature, some insurance papers. You get out of here. Get out. Well, that's a welcome. Either you leave or I call the police. Ruth, I'd like to talk to Jerry. Alone, if I may. Girl, have you taken leave of your senses? Ruth. Oh, you're not sorry for anything, Jerry. 
You know, there's a name for people like you. Saddest. Oh, listen. I know, you came here to gloat. Only you pushed me too far tonight. And so for the first time, you're going to see yourself the way I've come to see you. You're not making any sense. Why don't you ask me what a saddest is, Jerry? I'll tell you. It's a man who pretends to love his wife when he really hates her. It's a pervert. A man so sick he makes a career out of figuring out ways to hurt people. Shut up. Shut up or you'll hit me as that cherry. Oh, no, you never hit me. You never knocked me around unless I dragged you down to my level. That's what you told me. Is that why you married me in the first place, Cherry? Oh, it wasn't for a wife. Is it because you're not up to fighting like a real man fights? Or is it because you hate women? All women. <laughs> That's really it, isn't it? That fits the pattern, doesn't it? Saddest. What are you stopping for, Jerry? What's the matter? Don't I look enough like your mother? Helen? Helen? Like that? Just go on and on, messing up other people's lives. Helen, my plane leaves in three hours. I want you to go with me. Oh, God. When I was waiting out there in the street to see if Jerry's going to come back here or not, it, honey, I know I played it all wrong. But I love you, Helen. I want you. Play it your way. I don't care. I want you. I can't. I can't. I'm not going to stick with him. He's no good. It's not him. It's me. Don't you remember what you said back there at the Narrows? Something about you felt so good the whole world was singing. Don't you remember? Yes, I do remember that. But you don't understand. Everything's changed. I'm not the same as I was at your previous Don't great you life. understand? I'm asking you to marry me. Just go away. Just leave me alone and get on that plane and leave. All right, Emma. All right. That's it. Wasn't that Cliff who just went out? Beating your life, isn't it? Oh, Ellen Winslow, how can you be such a fool? You haven't done anything wrong. There's no reason for you to feel guilty. What you need is a good stiff drink. I'm all through drinking. I'm all through running away, too. Okay. Dealer's choice. What was Jerry doing in El Paso? Now, I got my start in life rolling drunks. Jerry out cold in the hall. I thought I'd better search him. I didn't find any insurance stuff, but I did find these in his pocket. I don't read Spanish. Neither do I. But all of a sudden, I may have something that just might turn out to be an idea. Operator, this is Ruth Rogers, Jackson 53565. Yes, I'd like to place a long distance call, please, person to person. Uh, Mr. Fred Burke. He's at the El Paso Times in El Paso, Texas. Ruth, whatever it is. Whatever it is, it's my call. So go sit in the corner and bite your fingernails. Fred? Remember Ruth Rogers? <laughs> well. You don't. <laughs> well, then, maybe you won't mind doing me a favor if it doesn't cost too much, huh? <laughs> now, wait a minute. That's a favor for you, not me. <laughs> Look, Fred, seriously. 
somebody around your paper must keep a list of Americans who get Mexican divorces across the way in Juarez, right? Uh, yeah, just within the past two or three weeks. Hey, he thinks so. Fellow that covers things for out of town papers always checks. Uh, yeah, Fred, you got it? Gerald Winslow, Quarter, Oklahoma. That's right. Ellen Winslow, defendant. Oh, thanks, Fred. You're a love. Uh, look, look, I, I don't have time to talk now, but uh, I won't forget this. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank God for old boyfriend. And just for the record, you're no longer Mrs. Gerald Winslow. Whatever happened at Quada, Jerry was so hot to ditch you and didn't even wait for an Oklahoma divorce. Jerry divorced me. Well, after a fashion, used a forged power of attorney, of course. But yes, he divorced you. Well, come on, girl. The war ass thing isn't worth the paper it's written on. But Jerry got it. That means he can't make any more trouble for you. He's left without a leg to stand on. Well, don't you understand? You're free. You can go with Cliff. I can't. You're a fool. You're rid of Jerry at last. And now with Cliff... What more could you ask for? Look, Ruth, I think Cliff deserves more than just half a woman. Half? Then it isn't Jerry. It's you. It's what's happening inside you. Is that it? Are you going to throw away your chance for happiness just because you think you're saddling Cliff with the wrong wife? I don't know. I'm all mixed up. Mixed up about what? I don't know. I just don't feel right about it. I, I, I failed, Jerry, didn't I? I couldn't stand to have that happen to Cliff. But Jerry was no I good. I know he's no good, Ruth. I realize that. Maybe he's that way because of the way I am. The old guilt feelings again. But you haven't anything to feel guilty about. Or have you? You've never said what happened at Quada. What was it, Ellen? Something about Jerry and his mother? What was it? You said something. You talked about it and you lied. I ran away. You ran... You ran away from what? I ran away from Jerry. He wanted me to leave Quada, but I... I got scared. It was so funny. He said such strange things, and... And then he grabbed me, and so I ran, I hit. I just ran. And then Harvey. And you think all this wouldn't have happened if you'd stayed with Jerry? You think Gerald would have saved you? Is that it? You know, Ellen, whatever goes wrong, it's your fault. It's got to be Ellen's fault. There's something funny about feelings, Ellen. They don't change easy. Not when they've been frozen into a lifetime. When that happens, you have to fight a lifetime. A thousand battles. And it hurts every time. But if you can just win that first one. We're gonna go for broke. I've come up with another snake for you. Let's see if you can stomp it. Do you remember this bra, Ellen? I don't know what it means, but I found it just now in Jerry's pocket. All torn and caked with dirt and dried blood. Flight 27, non-stop for Mexico City, may now be boarded at gate 4. Instruments. Rudder trim. Rudder trim is set. 
It's on operating set for takeoff two up. Flight instruments have power in this set. Flight 27 for Mexico City. All right. Flight 27, hold for late passenger. Okay, got it. I don't know how to thank you for this. So. Who said I had anything to do with it? Here, visit me. Oh, thank you. Please. You're impossible. How much? How much is a one-way ticket to El Paso? 